Good morning and welcome back to our Chronological Bible Reading. I'm Ray Reynolds, the minister of the Somerdale Church of Christ, and we are in 1 Kings chapter 13 today. I hope that you'll grab a copy of God's Word and take some notes as we dig into the Word of God together. The Bible says, And behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord, Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born in the house of David, and on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense uh, on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord spoken, Surely the altar shall split apart, and on the ashes, the ashes on it shall be poured out. So it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Arrest him. Then his hand, which he stretched out toward him, withered so that he could not pull it back to himself. The altar also is split apart, and the ashes poured out on the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me. The man of God entreated to the Lord and the king's hand was restored to him as, as and became as before. Then the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself and I'll give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, if you were to give me half your house, I wouldn't go in with you, nor would I eat bread and drink water in this place. For so it commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came to him and told him all the works the man of God had done that day in Bethel. So they also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And the father said to them, which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God went, uh, who came from Judah. Then he said to his son, Saddle the donkey for me. And they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it. And went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. He said to them, uh, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? He said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I cannot return with you, nor go in with you. Neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by the way by going the way you came. And he said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. He was lying to him. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Now it happened, as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back, and he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandments which the Lord your God gave, commanded you, but you came back, ate bread, and drank water in the place of which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was, after he'd eaten the bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled his donkey for him, the prophet whom he had brought back. When he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him, and his corpse was thrown on the road, and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the corpse, and there men passed by and saw the corpse thrown on the road, and the lion standing by the corpse. Then they went and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. Now when the prophet who had brought him back from the way heard it, he said, is it the man of God who is disobedient to the word of the Lord? Therefore the Lord has delivered him to the lion and has torn him and killed him according to the word of the Lord which he'd spoken to him. And he spoke to his son saying, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled it. Then he went and found his corpse thrown on the road and the donkey and the lion standing by the corpse. The lion had not eaten the corpse nor torn it, uh, torn the donkey. And the prophet took up the corpse of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back. So the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. Then he laid the corpse in his own tomb, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. So it was after he buried him that he spoke to his son, saying, When I'm dead, then bury me in the tomb where the man of God is buried. Lie in my bones beside his bones. 
For the saying which he cried out by the way by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines and all the high places which are in the cities of Samaria will surely come to pass. After this event, Jeroboam did not re did not turn from his evil way, but again he made priests from every class of people for every high place whom he wished, and he consecrated them and became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing was the sin of the house of Jeroboam, so as to exterminate and destroy it from the face of the earth. At the time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Please arise and disguise yourself, that they may not recognize you as the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. Indeed, Ahijah, the prophet, is there, who told me that I would become king over this people. Also, take with you ten loaves, some cakes, a jar of honey, and go to him, and he will tell you what will become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went to Shiloh, came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were glazed by reason of his age. Now the Lord said to Ahijah, Here is the wife of Jeroboam coming to ask you something about her son, for he's sick. Thus and thus you shall say to her, for it will be, when she comes in, that she will pretend to be another woman. And so it was, when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps, as she came through the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another person? For I have been sent to you with bad news. Go and tell Jeroboam, thus says the Lord God of Israel, because I exalted you among the people and made you ruler over my people Israel and tore the kingdom away from the house of David and gave it to you. And yet you have not been as my servant David who kept my commandments and followed me with all his heart to do what was right in my, his own eyes or right in my eyes. But you have done more evil than all who are before you. For you have gone and made yourself other gods and molded images to provoke me to anger and have cast me beside your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring disaster on the house of Jeroboam and I will cut off from Jeroboam every male in Israel, bond and free. I'll take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam as one takes uh, away re refuse until it is all gone. The dog shall eat whoever uh, whom, whoever belongs to Jeroboam and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. For the Lord has spoken. Arise, therefore, go to your own house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he is the only one of Jeroboam who shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something good toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel who will cut off the house of Jeroboam. This is the day. What? Even now. For the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. He will uproot Israel from the good land which he gave to their fathers and will scatter them beyond the river because they have made their wooden images provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam who sinned and made Israel sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. When she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. And they buried him, and all Israel mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he made war and how he reigned, indeed are they not written in the book of Chronicles and the kings of Israel. The period that Jeroboam reigned was 22 years, so he rested with his fathers. Then Nadab his son reigned in his place. And Rehoboam, the son of J Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he became king. He reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, a city which uh, the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Namah, an Amoritus, Ammonitus. The, uh, now Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord and provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they committed more than all their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places, sacred pillars and wooden images on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also perverted persons in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. It happened on the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away the gold shields which Solomon had made. Then King Rehoboam made bronze shields in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who guarded the doorway of the king's house. And whenever the king entered the house of the Lord, the guards carried them. 
Then they brought them back to the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam, all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. So Rehoboam rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Namah, an Ammonitess. Then Abijam, his son, reigned in his place. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, Abijam became king of Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Machak, uh, the granddaughter of Abish Shalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. His heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem by setting up his son after him and by establishing Jerusalem because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything he commanded him with all the days of his life, except in the manner of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now the rest of the acts of Abijam, all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. So Abijam rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa his son reigned in his place. In the twentieth year of Jeroboam king of Israel, Asa became king over Judah, and he reigned forty-one years in Jerusalem. His grandmother's name was Machek, the granddaughter of Abisholam, uh, Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord as his father David, and he banished the perverted persons from the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. Also, he removed Mecha, his grandmother, Mecha, his grandmother, from being queen mother because she had done an obscene image of Azra. And Asa cut down her obscene image and burned it by the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was loyal to the Lord all his days. He also brought into the house of the Lord the things which the father had, his father had donated or dedicated and the things which he himself had dedicated, silver and gold utensils. Now there was war between Asa and Basha king of Israel all their days. And Basha king of Israel came up against Judah and built Ramah uh, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house and delivered them to the hand of his servants. And King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tibrimon, uh, the son of Hezion, king of, Ju king of Assyria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you a present of silver and gold. Come and break your treaty with Basha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So Benadad heeded King Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. He attacked Ijon, Dan, Abel, Bath, Machek, and all of uh, the Chinneroth, with all the land of Naphtali. Now it happened when Basha heard it that he stopped building Ramah and remained in Tirzah. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout all Judah, none was exempted, and they took away the stones and timber of Ramah, which Basha had used for building, and with them King Asa built Geba of Benjamin and Mizpah. The rest of all the acts of Asa, all his might, all that he did, and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? But in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet. So Asa rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place. Now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah. And he reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in the sin by which he had made Israel sin. Then Basha, the son of Ahijah, the house of Issachar, conspired against him. And Basha killed him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, while Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. Basha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And it was so when he became king that he killed all the house of Jeroboam. He did not leave to Jeroboam anyone that breathed until he had destroyed him according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servant Ahijah the Shihalonite. 
because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he had sinned uh, and by which he had made Israel sin because of the provocation by which, with which he had provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Basha king of Israel all their days. In the third year of Asa king of Judah, Basha the son of Ahijah became king over all Israel in Tirzah and reigned 24 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of Jeroboam and in his sin by which he made Israel sin. We're so glad you joined us together today for our chronological reading of scripture. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Until then, have a blessed day.